Tiffany quit drinking altogether, so she's our designated driver. <laughs> Herschel goes on about a new cannabis strain he bred. After a few drinks, he is approached by a man named Claude, who asks him to dance. Claude is about five foot six, wiry, with dark hair, and, a thick, and thick eyebrows over an equally thick brow. He's not a stranger. We've spoken to him a few times before. Nate takes his hand and is led enthusiastically by Claude back downstairs. Herschel is approached several times. The men compliment his physique and he loves it, though he never takes any of them up on their offers. I know Herschel is straight, but he never has a girlfriend. At this moment in his life, I believe he prefers compliments to commitment. <laughs> While Tiffany doesn't drink, she does smoke cannabis and is now enthralled with Herschel's impromptu presentation. I'm on my fourth drink. That's when I hear it. Nate! I scream as I leap to my feet. Herschel immediately does the same, like a soldier reacting to a command from a superior officer. What is it, Tiffany? Asked if still seated. Something is wrong. I can feel it, I reply. Where? Herschel responds. There, in the alley, I say, pointing over the edge of the courtyard toward the building next to us. We can't see into the alley because of the stone wall. Let's go, Herschel shouts. Tiff rises to her feet. No, I say, this isn't for you. I can tell by the look on her face she's pissed, but she knows I'm right. Herschel leads the way running toward the stairs. When we make our way to the courtyard, we see that the security door has been propped open. Herschel runs into the door in full force, causing it to smack against the wall as it swiftly articulates 180 degrees. He turns right toward the alley, with me fast on his heels. The alley, door, the alley opens to our right about 20 feet after the security door. It's the space between the courtyard wall of Spectre and the hell. There we see five young men, Marines, confronting Nate and Claude. 
All are white men in their early 20s with a typical jarhead buzz cut. Slews of them travel over on the weekend from Camp Lejeune in Jacksonville. Sure, plenty of them are here to have a good time, then head back, but a substantial minority travel here to catcall, harass, and force themselves on young women. When that fails, they often go out looking for fights, whereas it's far too common in their spectrum to gay bash someone. What appears to be their unofficial commander is a large, muscular man of about six foot four. He leads the taunting. The other men are of average height and very fit as they have recently finished basic training. Y'all boys out here kissing? I hear him say. I can't make out much in the way of facial features because it's dark, but I can clearly see Nate standing directly in front of Claude to protect him. I know it's Nate because he almost always wears a crisp white shirt that shows up well in the dark. It dawns on me now. After dancing, Nate and Claude stepped out the security door, propping it open so they could make out in the alleyway. Yes, we are, Nate, replies as he stares down the large Marine, not flinching or capitulating to his demands by making excuses. Nate is proud of who he is, which is something I adore about him. You got a fucking problem, Herschel screams down the alleyway as we approach. Why? Is this here your boyfriend? My best friend, Herschel says as he reaches the Marine. Seeing me, he says, so you two are coming out of rectum too? Rectum is a pejorative guys like him use to describe the only gay friendly establishment in Wilmington. Occasionally when referring to women, they call it speckle. I suppose they think it's clever. Are you planning on doing something about it, the brute requires? I'm planning on going home with my friends safely. That's all. No one has, no one has bothered you. Just go back to your bar and have a few more drinks and we'll go back to ours, Herschel responds. Are you telling me what to do, he asks. It's a friendly suggestion. They haven't done anything to you. They're fagging the place up. That's enough to piss me off good. Nate and Claude begin moving away from the courtyard wall toward us. Wait a second, bitch boy. Ain't nobody said you can go anywhere. The large Marine says, sorry. Is grabbing Nate by the collar with his left hand. What you gonna do? There's five of us against two skinny homos, you and a girl. Whatever it takes, Herschel responds. At that moment, the hulking Marine, while still holding Nate by his collar, reaches back his right hand in the fist. The man is drunk, and it's, extremely, it's an extremely telegraphed punch. Before he can land it, Nate quickly jabs the man in the liver with his left fist. Surprised and in excruciating pain, he stumbles backward toward his friend. I'm instantly proud of Nate. I told him that. A proper liver shot is devastating and can take down the largest opponent. That's why they're illegal in boxing. <laughs> the other four immediately doll pile Nate and Claude. Herschel put his elbow into the throat of the man closest to him, sending the boar wheezing to his knees. Then there is general chaos. Fists and kicks swing wildly. The first Marine I get my hands on, I grab by the collar and crammed my left thumb into his right eye, crushing it into his skull. I was going to be a sniper, he screams. <laughs> Not anymore, I reply. <laughs> now it's the three of us, of, us, of us against two. I feel the anger swelling up within me. The earth calls to me, saying, take my energy, return to your path. I resist because we easily pummel the remaining two. But then, the larger Marine gets back upon his feet. He grabs me with both hands and lifts my body up against the wall. Nate and Claude are on my right and Herschel is to my left. As they close in, Herschel sees my left hand glowing bright white. Step back, he screams to both of them. Knowing exactly what Herschel meant, Nate grabs Claude and pulls him away. I reach up with my glowing white hand and light the man's entire right arm on fire. Wailing in pain, he falls back. I focus my energy on the wall behind him. The bricks disappear as I bring forth a stone archway that opens up to an unearthly night sky. I swiftly move toward the man, kicking him in the chest. He falls backward through the passageway. I catch a glimpse of a creature, eight feet tall, with an oblong head, a small, plump body, and spindly legs. Its skin is the color of school paste. Bright indigo-colored veins are easily apparent underneath. 
There are no eyes, just black holes. Its upper mouth is teeming with human-like teeth. There's no, there's no lower jaw, only a flappy hole leading to a gullet. <laughs> As it gallops, the thing releases a shriek that echoes out into the alleyways. He grabs up the man off his feet and flees with him toward the woods. I pull my hand away, and the portal closes. The other men flee. Okay.